Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Spot Mata here from Traditionally Inspired Meaningful Art and this is Friday Sews. So thank you so much to Jen from Today in Jen Sewing Room for kicking off the hashtag Friday Sews where we get together in the sewing community on a weekly-ish basis and talk about what we've been up to. I am just going to tell you right now that this video is going to be um, quite choppy. I recorded the first part of this video two weeks ago, two Fridays ago, um, which was when I was trying to give you my Friday sews of an update of the things that I had made as the month of June was ending. Since then, so much has happened. Hubby traveled internationally, so trying to get him ready. I hosted or facilitated two paint parties, which were exceptional. One for a university's like admission staff and then for another um, a community center out in Pittsburgh, which brings me to the point. Following hubby's departure, me, the kiddos, and my mom all took a trip. We stopped in Pittsburgh for a couple of days and then went up to Michigan. I am just getting back from that trip as of yesterday. So needless to say, it's been like, everything's been happening. Um, as far as sewing goes, after what I was showing you in the previous recording of the Friday shows, which we will get to, I actually had two alterations to do, one for my best friend. She was attending a wedding um, two Fridays ago and I finished up the dress for that. And then another, um, just needed another alteration for my aunt as well. So that was all of the sewing I was able to do before me and the little ones and my mom took our trip. So there has not been any sewing for like a hardcore week and a half, which is actually okay with me. I do miss it. I was. Um, I wanted to be excited coming back to the sewing room, but the way that I left the sewing room, oh, it's hard to get excited about the mess that is, that you all cannot see. Be thankful. All right, so what I'm currently wearing, this is a dress that I will talk to you about in depth in just a moment. What I'm wearing under it will be different than the previous uh, footage, but I'm gearing up for a trip this upcoming week. Next Wednesday, I should be on a voyage, okay, um, on a girl's trip. And I, of course, am do in like panic mode, beginning to get really anxious and trying to finish all the projects and figure out what all I'm taking with me. And in that haste, I was like, could I just finish up, you know, this dress? This is the silk sort of slip that I had made to go under the dress that I wore to chaperone prom recently. If you haven't already seen that video, I will try and link it, but I shared um, a little bit about this. So that's why it's all wrinkly and whatnot. I was just trying to motivate myself to see, am I going to do something to it or not? <sighs> what a long intro. It's, it feels good to be back. I will again apologize. Um, I don't know what I last told you. I did not have time to watch all of that footage, but I am going to rewind back to two Fridays ago, and I'm going to let that Fatmata let you know about this dress. And then we will meet back present day to start a talk a little bit about um, what I plan to do, hopefully with 8982 in the future. And then of course, I want to talk to you about my wrap dress, which I did get to finish. This is 8735. And this is a woven wrap dress. It's a part of my make nine and I made it. So We'll meet back in just a moment. All right, so hopefully this will be a rather quick video. And because I said that it won't be, but I have some makes to show you, two of which I'm currently wearing. And I am so excited to say that I finished my M7974 dress, which is what I'm wearing. This is a McCall's pattern. Again, M7974 and I made view D. So I'm really excited with how this turned out. I utilized a cotton bazang fabric that I got for my aunt for my wedding. So this is an African, it's like African wax prints cousin. I'm sure they belong to the same family, 
but instead of it just being strictly an Ankara fabric, the Bazan fabric has like a jacquard weave through it, if you will, and it often is a little bit shinier. So let me show you like a remnant piece so that you can see what I mean. Hopefully you can see like there is a weave running through this, like a jacquard weave. This one at least was a lot softer than usual Ankara fabrics and it's just luscious. Now, initially I set out to put sleeves on this, so these are my sleeves. I did try it on with the sleeves and I used view B sleeves and lengthened them slightly with the idea that I could possibly go in and like put elastic at the cuffs. It felt overwhelming when I wore it with the sleeves on. There's something about the way that I cut the sleeves, it had the pink in the front. I don't know if it would have been different if the orange was in the front, but with the pink sleeves, it just, it felt really busy with the pink in the front, pink here. I love this print. I love how colorful it is and how dramatic and how much of a statement it makes. All things that I fell in love with about this print, but I did start to feel like, oh, this is quite overwhelming. So you can see the orange is more so in the back of that sleeve. And I don't know if it would have changed, like my impression of it might have changed if the orange was in the front so that it um, was broken up a little bit, not so much pink next to each other. I'm not sure. But just the way that the pattern piece was laid out when I cut it, it happened to be that the pink was on um, the side in the front. I went ahead and tried it on with the sleeves on. It felt a little bit overwhelming. Before I even put elastic in the cuff, I just decided that I would remove the sleeves and go for view D, which is sleeveless, which meant that I needed to create some long sleeve tops to wear under it. I found that for like summer or warmer weather, I don't have a lot of layering tops. I have like from Walmart, just some long sleeve white stag, whatever brand they have at Walmart. Um, long sleeve shirts which I don't often like they don't add a lot to the outfits I find and I usually wear those layered under things in the cooler months so I had picked up this cotton knit fabric from G Street Fabrics in the dead stock section um, some time ago it has this beautiful golden rod sort of stripe you can see the remnant of that here I would love to make like uh, maxi tank sort of dress out of this if the fabric is enough if, if that would work but that's not the point of this um, so I wanted to make a long sleeve top because I felt like that color really picks up on this caramel color that is throughout this lovely fabric this of course does have pockets as I mentioned in a previous Friday Sews video, I did add some volume to the skirt of this make. And I did that simply by sort of laying the pattern piece further away from the selvage when I was cutting it out. I realized that um, the way that the pattern piece is laid out left like excess space on the fabric that I had at least. And I thought I could have this awkward like diagonal slither of fabric that I would do nothing with because it's a diagonal piece. Or I could just shift the pattern pieces to kind of butt up against each other on the on the um, fabric and then get extra fabric on, you know, either end of those pieces. So I will insert a clip of what that looks like, what the pattern piece looks like laid out on top of the fabric and how much space I gain but I think all around maybe as far as fullness I probably added somewhere close to like eight or so inches or if not more of fabric so the skirt is super swishy and full I love this have I already said that I love it I love it to bits I wore it yesterday running errands going to Target and I just felt fantastic. It was flowing in the wind. It's so comfortable. I do think that this will get some longevity as far as when I can wear it because I could see myself layering like my um, navy turtlenecks under here very easily, other cream colored um, turtlenecks and things like that. That being said, uh, for the undershirt that I'm wearing, I use Simplicity S8982 which I have touted in the past for being like my tried and true knit pattern and all of that. And if you could hear it in my voice, you might know that there's a but. 
coming behind that statement. And what I want to say is this. Do I think that this pattern is phenomenal and serves a purpose? Yes. But when I was sewing it just recently, I was like, what? So initially I had cut out a size 10 because all of the words on this packet make me believe that a size 10 would fit. So when I look at finished garment measurements for the bust of the shirts, so views C and B and C, um, the finished bust measurements for a size 10 was a 34 and a half. I was assuming that includes, and it does, it includes the wearing ease, which for a knit garment, something that has spandex, that that would be like negative ease. So 34 and a half inches, I'm about a 35, right? 35 inch. I have a one inch difference between my high bust and low bust. Not much happening here, okay? So I cut a size 10 and notoriously, every single time I make this, I'm like grading it in, grading it in. But I was just assuming that maybe it's the type of knit materials I was using more the visco spandex blends because those are super stretchy. But for a cotton knit, I mean, they stretch. This has a decent amount of stretch, but I mean, it's not the stretchiest fabric you ever did need, right? Like that's, that's about it. That, that's it, right? So I ended up actually sizing down to the smallest size, which is a size six, I think. So I went from a size 10 to a size six. And this now fits, I graded out to a size eight at the hip. That to me is preposterous that I would be the smallest size in this pack. I mean, to fit like this, right? Which is how I would want my knit shirts that I'm layering to fit, by the way. Now, I did think about it and initially, like I love, I use big four patterns because initially I wasn't really a pattern user. And now that I am, I have just been sticking really to the low cost options or thrifting my patterns, which has been really nice. I know indie patterns folks rave about it, but often I think, oh, okay, if I have an alternative, it doesn't necessarily make sense to spend more money to get something. Um, even though I would love to support indie designers, I think if I already have something that is very similar, use what you have. However, I have heard so many folks talk about the Nico top and I've seen folks make it. And if the drafting is going to be substantially different, I, I see the reason why folks are making that investment. I just want to say that. <laughs> and I for a second was like, do I need to go and pick up the Nico top and dress? Because I, I, have, I have thoughts about the fit of this and the arm side and just different ways that it's landing that aren't perfect. And I could probably just go in with the pattern and tweak some things because I think the arm side, the the curve of it might be a bit shallow. Like it does have some pooling here, which I don't think should be happening if I'm in a smaller size and it should fit better. I have some thoughts about the drafting of this. Either way, I love it. I still would stand behind making it, but I do think that even though it's a knit and it is forgiving, there is some space for improvement here to get the exact fit that I want. But that's the joys when you sew. I think that's we get to be nitpicky about those things. And maybe that's just me being nitpicky because I could tell you right now, I probably have a ton of t-shirts that fit me the way that this does. Hi, so I'm coming back. I had to take a quick break. Therefore, I don't know what I have already shared with you, but I wanted to bring up the fact that I made something else using S8982. The first thing that I had made with that pattern was this cream colored puff sleeves shirt. This is view C of the pattern and it is using the remnants that I had from the color blocked dress that I also made with S8982. It is made in the size 10. So I made this and after wearing it, that's when I was like, wow, size 10 is large for me. I did use clear elastic to stabilize the shoulder seams in both tops. I also wanna show you that, um, I don't feel like I did such a great job with this, with the stripes. Let me, let me show you the stripes. So here's the top that I was wearing in that previous video. One of the things that I did not realize until I finished surging everything was that my stripes do not match up. Like this is not even an attempt. However, going towards the armhole, as you can see, it starts to match up. Now, I don't know if this was something that maybe I was eyeballing it and matching it up down here. And then for whatever reason, I guess as stripes go, 
I could not maintain that matchup. On this side, it seems as though I was more cognizant of the stripes matching at the top, but not at the armhole. I really don't know. Let me know if you've ever made a, you know, knit sort of top with stripes. I'm sure it probably applies also to if you're doing it with wovens, but how do you, where do you focus on matching your stripes? I'm assuming that I probably should have made the focus at the sleeve cap, like up where you would see it and not worry as much about what happens down by the arm side because it's a bit more hidden. Or was there a way that I should have been stretching or manipulating the fabric either in the cutting phase or in the sewing stage so that the stripes matched up? While this is serge, I could potentially see myself being excited enough about having this as a, you know, really decent top that I would unpick that and re-sew it if I needed to, let me know. I, I, it's very noticeable to me. Absolutely, it's very noticeable. And I'm just trying to figure out how badly I want to be more J. Crew and Banana Republic and less. I really want to fix that. Let me know in the comments down below if you know how I should have gone about that. So in the previous video, you would have seen this dress kind of hanging off to the side. So I wanted to address it. This is pattern 8735 and I did view D without that additional like cuff band. So here are the line drawings for this. It's a woven wrap top, which I was really intrigued by and I wanted to test it out. I cut a size 12, I believe, which is what I usually try and cut out for simplicity patterns. This did have cup sizings, so I used a B cup size, which is the smallest one that they had. And the finished bust measurement for a size 12 was a 37 and a half inch bust for that. So I had some issues with this, which I talked about in a previous Friday Sews, I believe, um, with how gapey the top was. And I went in and fiddled with it a little bit. I think a bit of the issues that I was having was primarily because I chose to align the inside. And I think some of my pieces were a bit off grain and stretched a little bit. So it was tugging and pulling on the outer fabric in an awkward way. So in trying to adjust that, I fiddled and like removed excess fabric in the princess seam of the bodice on just one of the sides, not both. A lot of weird stuff. Um, but ultimately, I got it to fit pretty nicely. This is a beautiful rayon jacquard fabric that I had picked up in the dead Sots section at G Street Fabrics, my favorite uh, fabric store, I love them. And it just had this beautiful floral detail on it. My apologies, this is so wrinkled. I took this with me to Michigan, so this is coming straight out of the suitcase. Um, another thing that I talked to you all about was the fact that I was going to add like a wrap over detail in this rayon fabric that I had in my stash that sort of complemented some of the stems and leaf detail in the fabric because I didn't have any more of the floral print. So I went ahead and created that and it might look really awkward because it isn't attached to the opposite side. It is attached to, um, it's like a circle. So I actually get into this garment by like putting it on over my head that way and then putting it like on like this. You know what I mean? Like you have to put this at the hip. You see, do you see what I'm saying? I don't want to actually wear it, but, and then it wraps over. And then of course, like I put my hands in it, which I can't do right now because I'm wearing something else. But that is how I would actually wear this. So this wrap detail goes all the way over. And um, it's great because it provides all of the coverage and I need it. So I wore this to work and we were walking out to lunch and my dress was just like blowing in the breeze. I think I took recorded like a short little video of me walking and you can see how much of the green rayon is exposed as I was walking. And all I could think was if I didn't have that green rayon right now, that would be skin showing, like that would be my whole leg exposed. I think the dress just, it's like, it's a wrap dress, so it just opens up. 
and I did not want that. So I'm so happy that I had included that additional length of fabric. And I think moving forward, if I were to ever revisit this pattern, I would absolutely do that. In wearing this as well, like I sat down and recorded another video for you all, um, a Thrifty Thursday haul, I think. And it was so gaping. Of course, I wore mine with a shirt under it. But had I not, this the the like crossover if you don't put a snap closure or something wherever you want it to land it gapes quite significantly and i didn't quite appreciate that because it doesn't wrap all the way around you have a tie that is at the waist on the left hand side and then the flap that comes over across ties right here at the side so that's how you close it you're not necessarily meant to wrap it all the way you know around your body so i think i don't know if that has something to do with it just something for you to be cautious about if you were going to try this pattern i think it's beautiful and lovely you just need to work out if you need a snap and recognize how much it sort of gapes or, or flaps open if you're in a really windy area okay just something for you to think about um but i was really fortunate to have had the foresight to add that little panel really happy i did that so i did french seams throughout this and like i said i fully lined the bodice of it um again using a bit of that green rayon fabric for the areas where i ran out and i'm really happy with the actual finishing of it because it's a rayon fabric i did wash and dry this like to pre-treat the fabric then in preparation for the trip that i just came back from I had washed, you know, a lot of my me made stuff and then I hung them. But then after they were mostly dry, I did pop them in the dryer just to get all the wrinkles out so that I could pack. This bad boy like shrunk itself up so much. So I'm hoping that it will loosen up a little bit because it made the bodice, like the wrap front closure, so much smaller that it actually was not fitting me that great. So I tried to wear this while I was on my trip and it was so restrictive um, up across this upper chest area, particularly where my arms and my biceps are. So moving was really a challenge because of the way the set in sleeve and it's a more fitted sleeve, right? It's not the really big blue sawn sleeves that we've been used to uh, as of late. And I actually love that silhouette. I I am kind of leaning towards this notion that I might need to start doing bicep adjustments to a lot of my straight sleeve patterns because this isn't the first time that something like this has happened where I feel really restricted in any movement that I make here, particularly up across this upper chest area, like this area feels really tight and a lot of the set in sleeve garments that I've made lately. So. I don't really think of myself as having particularly large biceps, but I'm not going to put it past it. So I think that's something that I could benefit from and I'm going to look into it just to give myself that added comfort, especially if I'm going to take the time to make my own clothes anyway. So that is that. I don't think I participated successfully in any single challenge. <laughs> all of June. However, in my attempt to do so at the very, you know, final days of June, I was in Joann's. They're having a spectacular sale, by the way, if you have not been in there recently. I mean, their remnants fabrics, incredible. They're having a sale on the clearance fabric, incredible. Like pop into your local Joann's if you haven't already, if you have access to one or shop online, I, you know, all the things. But anyways, I saw this pop fabric and their pop fabric is like the juvenile clothing um, fabric section. Oh, it's so darling. Look at all the fruit. They're so happy on this dark teal-ish background, dark blue background. I loved it so much. And this I got from the clearance section. It wasn't a remnant, but I only bought one yard. So what I was planning to do, it's so soft. It's like a hundred, it's 98% cotton, 2% spandex. So it has really great recovery in addition to its stretch. And it's that cotton fabric that's just that little bit spongy. It has some body to it, some weight. So it'd be great for like little ones like 
pants or shorts or something like that, but also t-shirts. So I was hoping to combine like three challenges into one. T-shirt for summer, so fruity, and he made June. I was gonna make my son a nice t-shirt out of this and then make something for my daughter as well with the extra, extra fabric. But I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna knock out all of them. I've already explained to you how the past two weeks have been going. So there was absolutely no time as the month of June was ending out because I was traveling. Um, so I didn't get to do it, but I do still have this scrumptious fabric. So I do still plan to make it. I just, you know, was kind of bummed that I didn't get to participate in any of the challenges because they had some really great ones in June. But if you did, I hope you had fun. As far as what I plan to sew, I've mentioned to you that I have a trip, a girl's trip coming up next Wednesday. Tomorrow, Saturday is Eid. Um, so I will be spending time with family for the majority of tomorrow. So I'm going to pick up the kids, be with the kids by my lonesome <laughs> um, tonight. And then tomorrow we have a packed day. Maybe I'll get some sewing in in the evening. Um, Sunday, I hope to get some sewing done. Mm, I work on Monday, maybe after work. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to sew. <laughs> but I have so many great ideas. I'm not going to be working on the Zimmerman inspired dress that I just... I know that I wanted to actually record the making of that and there's no way that I'll be able to um, have that sort of time to focus on doing it successfully and recording it. So I'm just going to wait until I get back from my trip. But I do have some ideas for what I would like to sew for the trip with T minus four days to go. It doesn't make sense. Mm -mm. Here are the fabrics that I'd love to work with. Oh my gosh. I just didn't leave myself enough time. Um, but that, I want that to be okay and I just want to enjoy the trip. So I'm trying to like mentally tell myself, you don't have to make all the things. I really don't. I need to remind myself of that. It's going to be okay. Anyway, I have this really fun, shaky fat. I just, I just love it. I got this eons ago. Um, from Joann's in the clearance section. It's just so much fun. I would love to make like a simple skirt out of this. I think because of the fabric, it doesn't have to be anything super dramatic or special. It just needs to fit. And this would do all the talking. Because look, it just says so much. Um, and I would probably pair this with my tiger print silk top that I made last month. Yeah, I love that. And okay, so this is the brown like really warm chestnutty sort of brown color. I picked this up at Joann's quite a while ago. It's like a, it has a beautiful crinkled-ish texture to it. And so I have two yards of this uncut. However, I do have more of this fabric because I had tried to make a set out of it two years ago, I think in 2020, and it did not work. So I cut it up for parts. So I have those pieces as well. But I'm thinking of doing my tried and true 8834. I'm thinking I might do something like 8834 with that wrap front feature. I might do something like that with this fabric because I think it's flirty, it's fun. It would be a bit more jazzy and, and interesting. So I'm gonna see if I can make this out of the brown fabric and this is the item I want to prioritize because like we are doing a whole, you know, photos will be taken. And this fabric right here, this Ankara print, I just love it. And a long time ago, not that long ago, but a while ago, I went through the hassle of cutting out all of these circles and the circle in the center for like, I, I can't even tell you how many yards of this stuff. We had purchased this fabric and during my brother's traditional wedding, we had used it as the table runners. So we had the fabric left over after that, which wasn't being utilized. And I really liked the print. 
there's this Ula Johnson really fun and flirty skirt or dress that I had seen. And I was like, oh, it already has the circles. Maybe I can just cut out a bunch of um, like a really long flounce. So I have so much flounce in here. I had alternated the colors for some of them and then for others, I left them a single color. I French seamed all of this together so that there were no raw edges. Um, will, will I even have time to figure out how to, how, to, how to do this? The answer is probably no. So it's not one that I would prioritize, but like I, I had to bring the fabric out because if I were to wear something like this, what better place to wear it than Miami, you know, than on a girl's trip, you know? <sighs> anyway, and I cut out the circles because there are some Zimmerman dresses that include some of these like really beautiful embellishments with like these circles sort of dangling from the garment so that when you're walking and bouncing, it just like flows and billows in the wind. It's quite exceptional and remarkable if you've ever seen it. Then I brought out this white cotton fabric, which I recently acquired from Joann's. It's beautiful. It has this hibiscus sort of um, print actually woven and embroidered onto it it's gorgeous i would love to make a simple white top out of this preferably a button-up top out of this um i got these fabrics from the remnant section so unfortunately i couldn't dictate how much of it i got but i have just a little over a yard of this i don't think it's fully enough to make a really nice button-up shirt so or maybe just like, like, like I'm, I'm really close to not having enough, but I think I'd be able to squeeze it out. Even if I have to like work in another sort of white fabric for my stash to fill in some of the gaps. Um, but that would be really nice just because it's crisp, but it's interesting since it has this hibiscus sort of, um, stitching all throughout and it would be interesting, right? Like something to just throw on over, whether it's jeans or really nice fun palazzo pants. I could tie it up over a dress. So many different way, ways I could see myself wearing a really nice white crisp button down shirt. Also, I mean, I could take one of my husband's buttoned up shirts. I could thrift one really quickly. So I am trying to like lessen the stress just by telling myself I don't have to make everything. And the point of this trip is to enjoy the trip, not necessarily to like make everything I wear on the trip. So I have to like, I have to tell my, I'm telling myself that. So that's where I am currently. I'm, I'm, I can't even get into the fabric haul. I went to G Street Fabrics two weeks ago I got, and I got this. I also, while I was in Michigan, I went to this place called Scrap. Creative Reuse Center in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and it's like a kid in a candy store. So I might do the haul and the haul from like the little bits and pieces that I picked up while I was at the Scrap Creative Reuse Center in a separate video to give you something to watch while I'm away next week. Um, so that should be fun. I'm beginning to get overwhelmed with the ideas and just what I want to do. The point of my upcoming trip is to enjoy the trip. And the lovely people I'm with, it's not to make everything that I wear. Note to self. If you needed to hear that too, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, but I hope sewing has been going well for you. I really thought that I was going to get a ton more sewing done in the summer. But it is seeming like I just I want to do more stuff. Or maybe it's just these past couple of weeks because I have stuff actually going on. But I hope you're getting to sew and do something incredible. And I look forward to seeing you soon-ish, soon-ish. Have a good one, guys.